Welcome back to Central Valley Business. I'm your host today, Mike Briggs, and I've got two of my old friends with us yes. today, one from Tehachapi, one from around the corner. Mike Reynolds, a father, author of Three Strikes and, yeah. and You're Out, and Phil Wyman. Can I still call you Senator Wyman? You sure can. He was <laughs> one of my first bosses in uh, when I got into politics. He was a state senator, and, and we served together in the legislature for a while. Uh, but something is big coming up for you. It is. Uh, you know, I was honored uh, and had a chance to run for attorney general, and that was in 2014, and I ran against a very liberal person that, that didn't seem to have the values that I think Republicans and Democrats ought to have, and that is to protect people, to have food for people, and, and not to let those in other countries or other regions take, take us down. Uh, I am going to be, uh, well, I, have an I announced actually on the 150th anniversary of the death of Abraham Lincoln that I was going to be running for the United States Senate seat as an Abraham Lincoln Republican. And I can only say that because our family goes back to the Civil War and, and actually helped raise Mr. Lincoln. That's history, but the opportunity that I have had to represent the Central Valley and to, to have key decisions and opportunities with, with Mike Reynolds as it relates to uh, the killings uh, and and the carrying of legislation with Bill Jones, with, with Mike taking the lead of three strikes really did make a difference. And I think that the United States Senate needs somebody who is focused on law and order, understands, as does Mike and I, that it can affect any family, and we need to protect our, our people. I, I principally also went after I announced uh, uh, last April uh, and testified on behalf of Kate's Law, which was when an illegal alien terrorist coming four and five times uh, when the rule of law said that the local cops should have arrested them, uh, murdered Kate Stein Steinle for no reason. She was at Pier 14, she was alive, and then she was gone. And, and Mike, you and I you know, have, have both seen this. And, and I really was matured and, and really had a, a brother in arms as we fought and secured three strikes. And just to remind us, you know, what lives were saved as a consequence of some lives that were touching us that were taken. Well, uh, you know, we talk about terrorist acts. Uh, this one in San Bernardino. Uh, how many people were killed in that? Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen, 14 okay. Uh, in, in Paris, uh, what you have to understand is, is California back then was seeing 12 murders every day. Every day. Now, they weren't all at once by one, the, the effects of one person, but <clears throat> the fact is, is those are, are people that died. They died in California, and they died at the hands of, of uh, somebody else, first-degree murders. But now, uh, since the passage of three strikes, we saw in a very short time, within uh, three years, California was the fourth highest crime state in the United States, the fourth highest. We dropped to 28 within just three years after the passage of three strikes. And we dropped our murder rate in half from 4,000 down to 2,000. Now, what does that mean? Instead of 12 people a day being murdered, there's uh, about six. Now, uh, it's still six too many in my opinion, but the fact is, is, is that it means that, that six families have their loved ones. They don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. But uh, any time you, you, you have uh, people being murdered uh, in your communities, it's not a good thing. And we know, know when, when crime comes in, everything good moves out. The first sworn duty of virtually every elected official, from the president down to your mayor, down to uh, your uh, community leaders of all kinds, their first and foremost duty should be the protection of the people that they serve. And somehow we've got it into our minds that, that uh, uh, we have to protect uh, ourselves against uh, the invasion from a, a, a foreign body that's come in to hurt us. Well, the, the real hurt is transpiring each and every day and on our streets, and it's getting worse, not better. Uh, and in uh, California, after nearly 20 years of keeping this state safe, uh, uh, three strikes and several other very good crime laws are being dismantled one after the other. Three strikes not only passed in California, but it also went up in nearly 30 other states, as well as the federal government. Uh, all of um, uh, the federal government laws are now being reviewed. They're trying to down 
uh, uh, reduce their intensity as to who they applied to and how much time you'd be serving for these these crimes. Not a good uh, thing. Here in California, we've kind of led the way in that of decriminalizing our laws. And California, being the trendsetter that it is, is setting a very ugly trend. And, and uh, uh, we uh, have uh, found that, that uh, uh, official reporting uh, that should be through our attorney general um, has not been forthcoming. They've exactly. kept these crime numbers uh, from the public, uh, but they can't keep them from the FBI. The FBI has reported this last year, the first six months, of cities of over 100,000 and more. Nationally, crime went up about 1.4 percent, not terribly concerning. But here in California, crime's gone up 10 times faster mm. than the national average. Um, uh, we are, are seeing increases not only in our city here that we live in Fresno, but right. uh, even cities like San Francisco, which you always think of as, as being the, the uh, home base for many people that are supporting these kinds of changes. San Francisco is, uh, has seen a 71% increase in their murder rate over the first six months of this last year alone. I mean, these are uh, jumps that we have never experienced before. And very frankly, the proposals that are coming before us are actually to decriminalize even more and greater portions of our laws. Now, Phil has been there from the onset of this. I, I've supported Phil uh, because he carried three strikes through the Senate, Thank California you. Senate for us, and he is without question the most qualified person to serve as a U.S. Senator. And I, uh, I'm very honored that he would uh, take this challenge on. It's seldom that we'd see a person with this level of depth and, and understanding of the issues over such a, a long period of time and, and a commitment to keeping what works in place. And we have a habit in this country of every time something works, we want to dismantle it or regulate right. it or tax it out of existence. And, and uh, this has, uh, has provided dividends for each and every person that lives in California. It doesn't matter whether you support three strikes or not. Uh, as, a, uh, as a fact, you have half the chance of being a victim of a violent crime as you did prior to its passage. You need to keep this law in place and, and, uh, and the kinds of policies that, that uh, have, have brought it to uh, uh, work. And, and fr frankly, uh, uh, we're now seeing those eroded right before our very eyes, and, and I'm certain that uh, Phil will do everything possible to uh, try to uh, make certain that, that we have safety in our homes and our streets and our children, I don't care what kind of an education they're, they're getting, if they can't get to that school and they can't get home again, if they've got a greater concern about getting home alive than doing their homework, we've got a problem yeah. here. And, and uh, that's the very first hurdle. That's the first thing you have to do. Exactly. If you can't uh, have a safe community, you're not going to have much of a community. And, Mike, I would say, too, as I was learning from you uh, from the Hispanic community, especially here in the Valley, they wanted school uniforms so that if a young woman simply had the wrong color of shoes or, or dress, that, mm -hmm. that she could be killed or worse. Uh, so I want the folks to know how, how honored I am that, that you're at my side because California needs somebody uh, that is focused on the rule of law, that knows that only if you have the rule of law are people protected. And that means if you have sanctuaryism, which we're seeing in the Bay Area and elsewhere throughout the state and the nation, where certain people are told by locals that they can't, under a federal system, arrest somebody and somebody dies, as was the case with Kate Steinle. Now, this needs to be turned around. And sadly, when I was uh, running for attorney general and debating with, with Kamala Harris and others, uh, she was dismissive about it. And then when it happened, she said that there are mistakes. And I responded, you know, the mistake is that you don't understand the rule of law or at least will not enforce it. And because of that, innocent people have died. And I, I, I share here with my, my wonderful friend uh, that... As I go to the United States Senate, I'm not going as a Republican or a Democrat. I'm going as a person who wants our nation to be protective and that our Constitution is obeyed and that anybody thinks that they can go into San Francisco or somewhere else and not obey the law. I think Abraham Lincoln so solved that. There is no more Confederacy that there were actually in the last two to three weeks 
efforts to prevent uh, for the for the FBI to come in and take down people who were terrorists. It's, it's the world turned upside down, but most people, unlike you and I, haven't seen the consequences or are not educated enough. So to have you on my side and, and so we can talk to other people and say we've got to stop that means we don't need somebody like Kamala Harris going to the, to the United States Senate. Uh, she's actually suggested that, that perhaps President Obama should be a, a, a member or that she it's suggested. That's not how future generations will be able to have seen that innocent well, people were protected. Yeah, you know, you know it, it, it seems to, uh, that, that the federal government, when they make laws, they should apply to every state equally. Absolutely. And, and what we're getting is states that uh, uh, are selectively enforcing federal laws, cities that are going even beyond the state laws and having their own little jurisdiction and, and applying the laws that they want in their community. And, and you get these totally different rules and regulations from one community, from one state. You should have one set of laws that applies to right. everybody and equally, and that's what the federal government was set up to do, and that's what they do. And, and uh, now uh, we're uh, really seeing uh, such a patchwork, a quilt work of, of uh, 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 rules and regulations that no one really understands uh, uh, what the heck is going on. And, you know, if you've uh, really wanted to obey the laws, uh, you're not sure which ones you're uh, violating and which ones you're not. Exactly. And, and that's what they've been able to do by the selective enforcement. We're getting up against our, our time limit, but tell us uh, how this, I mean, this is a business show, not a political show, but sure. certainly <laughs> what you're saying is going to affect our businesses. Uh, how does this seat come open? Who might you face? Let, and what are the... Let, what are the uh, let me give you some of that background. Uh, it's the boxer seat. So I was the state senator here, worked on water issues. The issues that I learned about as a graduate of UC Davis uh, and also as a veteran and, and as, as an attorney. Uh, we need to have focus by people who have seen the reality of what's going on and protecting our borders, keeping those people who could be terrorists that are coming in. These are all things we need to do. Uh, I will be uh, debating two other Republicans uh, this Sunday down at Knott's Berry Farm. They're both uh, former chairs of the Republican Party. Uh, I'm the only person who's been on the ballot, and, and I'm... I'm I don't want to use the word pride or, or proud, but I, it, I think it means something to other people when the areas that I've represented, such as the Central Valley, such as the high desert, uh, when we looked at the results of the, of the run, I mean, we did tremendously well, regardless of a person's color or their ethnicity. They want themselves and their children protected, and that is my commitment, and that's why I believe I am probably, since the other folks have never been there, and one of them actually uh, said that he thought we sh that Obama should appoint a member of the United States Supreme Court now when the Justice Scalia, one of the most remarkably beautiful, brilliant people ever to serve, just shows that we don't need ignorant, unexperienced people. Maybe we have too many people in office, but I've won and I've lost, as you know, standing for the issues that are important to our people. Okay, we've got one minute left. Last message to our viewers. I, I am so pleased to be here in the Central Valley uh, to have a debate on who the Republican and other candidates might be that are considered for the United States Senate. And I look forward to debating those issues, especially looking at ways that we can protect our, our, our fellow Californians and that we can bring prosperity and continue to feed not only the nation, the state, but the world. And Mike Reynolds, uh, author of Three Strikes, You're Out, and Senator Phil Wyman running for the United States Senate. Good luck to you. And as the race goes on, we hope to have you back again and again for updates. We'll be back with more Central Valley Business right after this.